This is a regular monthly memorial service for April and this Sunday morning family service here there at the Twin Cities Buddhist Sangha. The monthly memorial service is a service that allows us to collectively, collectively observe a memorial service for our loved ones who have passed away before us. It was a tradition in Japan to have family memorial services which would be held in the homes. But here in the United States, it's not very practical for the minister to visit each family at their home. Then, as people got busier and more spread out, we have this collective memorial service when we can remember our loved ones together. On one of the services each month, we have this monthly memorial service so that many people can gather to remember our loved ones. And now with the pandemic, we're having the service online. This service, like all services, all memorial services, is in memory of a loved one who has passed away before us. But the reason and the purpose for the service is for us, the ones who remain behind. This is our opportunity to remember and honor our ancestors. This service gives us an opportunity to offer incense, to chant the sutras, but most of all, to give a spiritual offering in our own way, in memory of our loved ones. It has been a while since I have talked to the Twin City Sangha and it remains an honor and a privilege to do so. I have been following the Sangha as it has grown and developed since the, since the pandemic. I'm so pleased that the Sangha has actually grown in numbers and continues to be a vibrant community. There are many faces I see in the Zoom that I have not met and I look forward to meeting you at some time. And for the old timers, hello again. This morning, I'd like to talk about something very basic, basic to all of Buddhism, and, in, and to, in particular, Shin Buddhism. But the idea of becoming a Buddha is a personal experience. The historical Shakyamuni Buddha showed us that there's a, that showed us that being enlightened is possible, but it is an experience. No one can do it for you. No one can give it to you. And no, you can't buy it at Amazon.com. This means that we live life and we direct our energies towards enlightenment. We often hear the argument going around asking, is Buddhism a religion? or is Buddhism a philosophy? For the most part, Buddhists don't care. Perhaps it is neither, perhaps it is both. But for us, it is just life. It is a way of looking at the world and at the universe in a simple and grounded way. It actually is very simple. We are born and we will die. This time in between is that we call life, and life is what is important. This simple understanding that because I was born, I will die. This is the cycle of life and death. It is just one example of change. And the acceptance of death, the acceptance actually of my death, is what makes living and what makes this life meaningful. Shakyamuni taught us the Four Noble Truths, the first being, life is dukkha. In our usual state of living, we are filled with dukkha or suffering. Life is suffering. We suffer because of selfish desires. The basic human instinct Instincts for food, water, shelter, and clothing are simple. 
The dukkha in human life is caused by our ego, our own selfish image of ourselves. Dukkha is always wanting something or wanting something more, wanting what someone else has. Dukkha causes suffering because of desires, whether it be riches, whether it be fame, maybe it's a bigger house or a new car or whatever. Our selfish desires cause our dukkha. Our selfish desires cause the suffering. The Shakyamuni Buddha saw things as they really are and was able to experience the end of dukkha and discovered enlightenment. Again, it is important to remember that enlightenment is a discovery. To find something that was always there. The Buddha did not create enlightenment. It was already there, just waiting to be discovered. Again, enlightenment is a discovery. In the historical development of Buddhism, one of the unique things of the Dharma, the teachings, is that it predicted its own downfall. There are four stages in this, this teaching, the four stages of Buddhism. The first stage is when there is both the teacher and the teaching. The second stage is when the teacher is gone but remembered, and the teaching remains. In the third stage, we call mappo, when the teacher is gone and not remembered, and the teachings become confused and often misunderstood. The fourth stage is when the next Buddha called Maitreya will appear in 10,000 years. So we are in this third stage, the age of Mapo, often called the age of the decadent Dharma. In the age of the decadent Dharma, in Mapo, we need help. All through Mahayana Buddha, Buddhism, we see the need for other power or what we would consider external help. We need this help. Unfortunately, Shakyamuni shared the Dharma of Amida. In the larger Skuhavati Vuha Sutra, it tells us of Dharmakara Bodhisattva, a Bodhis, great Bodhisattva who made 48 vows to save the universe and to become Amida Buddha. We call this vow power or other power that external, beyond ourselves. Fortunate for Shin Buddhists, the path is open to us because of the gift, the gift of wisdom and compassion given to us from Amida Buddha. In particular, Shin Buddha, as Shin Buddhists, we focus on the primal vow or the original vow, which is the 18th vow which assures all sentient beings, all living things, all sentient beings will assuredly awaken to Shinji. All sentient beings, not just good people or bad people, tall people or rich people or short people or poor people, all living things, all people, uh, without exception, will become a Buddha. This is really a very profound teaching. Amida assures all sentient beings will be born in the pure land of Amida, thus assuring our enlightenment. I guess we can say Amida is the agent or the vehicle that causes our awakening. And we respond by saying the name of Amida Buddha. We say Namo Amidavasu as our expression of gratitude, of thankfulness. In particular, 
Shin Buddhist, in Shin Buddhism, or our founder Shinran Shonin, refined and had the insight that goes beyond the, the traditional teachings. Shinran saw, <coughs> excuse me, Shinran saw that humans are bonbu, selfish beings. Selfish beings who are incapable of attaining enlightenment on our own. This is our dukkha, or as Shinran called it, bonno. Bonno is all our selfish passions, all our limitations, which limit our ability to discover enlightenment. So Shinran saw a step further and realized that Limited selfish beings are incapable unless we get help. That external help of the other power of Amida Buddha is what Shinran saw, had the insight to actually reverse much of the teachings. The true intent of the vow, it is to be a gift to us because we're so incapable, because we're so limited. Our efforts are useless, you know, our self power efforts are just totally futile. This is we, this is why we call ourselves the path of Buddhism or the sect, the path of the true pure land sect. It approaches life with a sense of gratitude we say the name of Amida Buddha. And when we say the name, we are expressing our spiritual gratitude. Thus, Shin Buddhism is pretty unique. And we say Shin Buddhism is a religion of thank you. Most other religions are religions of pleas in that we're asking or praying for something. But in Shin Buddhism, it is a religion of gratitude, a religion of saying thank you for, for what we have already received. So fortunately, as everyday Shin Buddhists, we just have to live our own lives just as we are and accept both the hardships and the joys of living. And then we can focus on the community our community, like this Sangha. We are all fellow travelers, fellow tra travelers following the path of Shin Buddhism. So we come just as we are, with no requirements and no limitations, and we accept who we are, just as we are. So we, we approach Amida Buddha, we approach the Sangha, just as we are because we are, we are assured of being born in Amida's pure land, to become bodhisattvas and then Buddhas. We express our gratitude each time we say the name, each time we say Namo Amida Butsu. And Amida Buddha exists because I am imperfect. I am Bombu and I need Amida. We are mutually dependent, interdependent, interconnected. We need each other. For Amida to exist, he, Amida needs people like us, Bombu. And people like us who are Bombu need Amida. So it's a mutually dependent existence. Amida exists because I am imperfect. Namo Amidabutsu, with gratitude and kindness beyond words. Namo Amidabutsu.